Hi everyone, Peter Wilson here again on Checkmate the Matrix. I'm all on me lonesome today, but we have a lot of fantastic interviews from people who are from every different type of background that you can actually imagine. So we had a lot of really good, exciting stuff coming up, not just covering the aspects of contract law or whatever it would be, you know, and everything that's going on, but so many different things on spirituality and health and everything else as well. Uh, today, though, what I'm going to do, I'm talking about uh, the DVLA and how would you put it? I don't know. The scam that they've been pulling on everybody forever the, the, since they've been created. And it's all to do, obviously, with your vehicle, the license plates and also your uh, manufacturer's certificate of origin. So this, I mean, we've been looking at ways uh, uh, of trying to fight the same as everybody else finding out what's going on and why we're tied into so many contracts all about you know, like why is it we have to pay this road tax you know now obviously i think it's all right to have insurance just in case you hurt anyone you know like you know that you, you can actually cover any costs involved but why do you have to pay uh tax obviously you want to have a, your car running well but why do you have to actually get fined if you haven't had the mot on time do you know what I mean? It's common sense to actually have your car maintained, make sure the oil is good and the tires are good. And that just makes sense because you don't fancy getting crippled or killing yourself anyway, do you? However, why should you get fined if you're a few days late or whatever it would be? But the same with the tax. I mean, we get taxed for, for sleeping, for waking, for walking out, for everything. It's just mental. Why is that? So, you know, a lot of people have tried before and saying what they want to deregister the car. And have been sending affidavits and all sorts off to the DVLA CEO, who is, well, at the minute, anyways, Julie Leonard. Uh, and some people say they get like better results than others. We do know, unfortunately, that some people have had the cars taken and crushed. Others have uh, been able to last a little bit longer and be okay. But it seems to be a, a, an ongoing battle and a, a massive minefield. I heard a video the other day where somebody shared with me, so I had a quick look at it, and it was a guy who'd recorded a conversation with a, a manager, allegedly, from the DVLA. And this manager from the DVLA, he admitted that the DVLA forced the car manufacturers to forward them the manufacturer's certificate of origin, which is how you would actually have a low deal title, which means you are the true owner of the actual vehicle. Uh, or, or would it be? But in, we're talking about vehicles now, but same thing as property, you'd be the true owner of your actual house. But anyway, back to the DVLA and the car. So he admitted that they actually forced the manufacturers to send them the, the certificate of origin, manufacturer certificate of origin. So then they control it. Then the, what they do is they register it with themselves and they create the number plate. Now, again, I was speaking to uh, a lady today, or at least uh, it was via email, and she was emailing me and said that she had done what we had seen on the video. Um, or then what she'd done was she actually rang the, the DVLA and she was talking to them, and the guy or whatever it was that was on the phone to her, this was just today, by the way, what we are now, 22nd of March, 2024, and the guy on the phone from the DVLA said, well, we only own the plates, that's what we actually own, don't own your car so that's what he said anyway so but we have for quite a while thought like well it's the actual number plate isn't it that, that, that all the trouble is from that's why everyone's always been trying to change the number plate put their own plates on and stuff like that but it has different results doesn't it as we do know now everybody knows about like being a traveler instead of the driver and it's all of the commercial terms and I fully get that and I fully support that. And I do actually 100% know that that is correct. However, when you're dealing with people, when I'm talking about the clowns in costumes, and all they can do is what's been done on their training. So if you have a look at the interview that I did with Michael Feely, who is like an ex-policeman, and he was actually saying it from the ex-policeman's point of view, all they do is get trained on specific things. You know, they don't even know what all of the acts and statutes, or even their own little acts and statutes. That's why they've got the little tablet that they keep pressing, because they haven't got a clue what they're talking about. You know, they actually have to go and Google, right, what it is they want to try and arrest you for. Uh, and <laughs> I'm not exaggerating. But anyway, so it, it, when you're taking that into consideration, you have to comprehend then why we get these so, such mixed results. 
So back to this video and the conversation. So this manager was actually admitting all of that and then saying that if we applied for uh, the, to have the manufacturer certificate of origin sent to us, given to us because we had actually uh, been fooled, basically, because they had not given us full disclosure uh, of the facts that they had been getting this manufacturer certificate of origin instead of us getting it. So anyway, he said you could fill in this form called a V, V for Victor, and number 888. Now, I've actually done a couple of TikTok videos on this, which if anyone's been on TikTok, you'll know that it's uh, slightly different from YouTube. You get far more abuse and attacks and everything, probably because it's very much more faceless. And it's funny how, like, when you trigger these people because it's going against what they believe and, and everything. I never told anybody about how to do it. I was just saying, look at this video, listen to this. This is what it's saying. And I got the forms. I said, let's go send them off. You know, and you didn't get a mixed response. Some people saying, great, I'll try. And others people saying, you need to be hung, drawn and quartered and then run over by your car. It's crazy. But there you go. Anyway, so then I found out by somebody that I know called Dave Witcher, maybe you know him as well, that it was a guy he knows. Now, I'm not going to say his name because I've tried to get a hold of him. I haven't got any messages back yet. So I'm not going to say his name in case he doesn't want it. But so Dave Witcher says, yeah, it's totally genuine. So good. So now we're going to experiment it. So we are pushing it. And there's two or three people that I know have already said, yeah, I've sent it. We're going to see what happens. I mean, it's interesting. So if you actually get this certificate back, like what they are saying, then you will become the true owner. You will have a loadial title. Therefore, right, according to the, the conversation, hopefully you'll have all seen it and probably getting shared around. Then what he's saying is you can actually return their number plates. As he said, we only own the number plates through the manufacturer certificate of origin because you paid the purchase price for the car. Maybe even have the receipt. All right. Either way, you actually got it. So now when they do the V5, and you can have a look at your V5, look at your own V5, and it says on there you are the registered keeper or the keeper or whatever it is. It doesn't say anything about being an owner. It actually says this is not proof of ownership. So therefore, that smells a bit fishy anyway, doesn't it? So what it is, is they've said on this video that you can return the plates to them and they wouldn't even need the V5 because it's now not with the number plates. That's all it's tied to because you are now the Elodi loaner. Now, I do know through looking at their uh, different custom motorbikes and custom trikes, you know, as I've been going through the years, that some of them, when they're custom made and they haven't actually been registered, that they are actually tax exempt. So it's got to be a similar thing. It must be. So we're going to send off the V treble A, and, but it, it's very small to write the reasons in. I'm going to share the screen now. I'm going to put the V888 up and I'm going to go over it and I'm going to go from there. I'm going to show you the additional information that I think you could add on to it to try and actually get this uh, certificate uh, returned to you. So here is the form. It's from the DVLA. All you need to do is Google V888. What I'll do is I'll actually put a link in the description. So you click on a link and it's going to take you to this document, this form. It's an application form. Now, as you see, it tells you it's from the driver and vehicle licensing agency, a request by an individual. It has to be request by an individual for information about the vehicle, not, not a company. I had a lot of messages and posts and everything saying, oh, you're wrong. It's got to be a company. No, look, V888, request by an individual for information about a vehicle. So we're going to go to option A and option B. So if we read it, really, we want to follow option A and then C below. So what we'll do is we'll go over to the, the, uh, the box there and you're going to put an X in this box. Option A. If your inquiry is about you as the current or previous keeper, fill in sections one to four below. You'll be advised of the fee if needed. So you put a little X in that box. And then we're going to go on down to here and we're going to go one your details and you're going to fill it in. You've probably done tons of other ones that are very similar. So I'm not going to explain it. And it said, what information do you want as the current previous keeper? Please tick. Requesting your own information as the registered or previous keeper. Free service. For details on how to request this, don't visit there. So the only thing I can presume is you're going to put an X in there, okay? Because that's what it is, what we're wanting information about our 
vehicle about us. It's vehicle registration number, you put it in, make and model, you put it in. And then it says, please state what you require, why you require this information, and how you are going to use it. And there's only one, two, three lines there. So not very big space to actually do this. But it does say, please continue on a separate sheet if necessary. So all I would put on there is I would put, I have enclosed a separate sheet as requested. Because it's pointless trying to write anything in a couple of lines. Then the declaration, normal thing, okay, whatever's on your V5 is what you're going to do here and sign it. And that is simple. There is no other bit of it. This is part B down there. You don't want to do that. We're doing part A. That's it. Sign the declaration, filled it in, and there we go. So then three lines, that's all you've got. So all I've just put is uh, on the separate sheet is enclosed and attached or whatever it is you want to put. So on the V8 there, you've seen when it says about putting in the information you want, it's very small. So you're just going to put, oh, we, we've attached a separate sheet as requested. And now I'll go over and I'll share what I've actually done. Now, I mean, I'm not saying this is what to do, by the way. I don't know. I've never done this before. What I want to find out is, is this real? Does this work? So the guy from the DVLA has said it. So now we have to test it. So I have no idea what I'm going to like write apart from like, well, I want that manufacturer certificate of origin. So I'm going to have to ask for it in one way or another, trying to think how to do it. So I've done a notice. I've literally made up. So you can do your own or you can copy this one. It makes no difference because there isn't, you know, who says is right or who says is wrong. You know, we, we, we don't know. So I'll share this and I'll read it out and then I'll, I'll put a, um, a link to it as well in the description. If you want to use it, use it. If you want to make your own up, do that. I mean, like I say, I don't know. I'm just trying. So this is just a notice that I've actually created. So I'll just put like to Julie Leonard in her private capacity and that's the address there. And you put your address in that side over to there, whatever it would be. So we have the date, whatever date it's going to be. Uh, and our, our reference, I always put our reference OK, so I've got that there. Anybody that has been on one of my talks will know exactly what I mean by that. OK, so I'm not going to go into it now. The DVLA vehicle reference number. Well, that's going to be a car registration number to the woman, Julie Leonard, who at times acts as CEO of DVLA. Now, you can change all of this because I've wrote this as, as a law common to I. It comes to the attention of I that you are in breach of contract law regarding full disclosure of information to instigate a meeting of the minds which is the long established formula to create a sound lawful contract. According to the telephone conversation with a member of DVLA staff, you have retained the manufacturer certificate of origin instead of supplying I with said certificate as should have been provided at the point of true purchase of the concerned vehicle. It concerns I greatly that any corporation will conceal information uh, from I in order to obtain a deceitful advantage in any situation. With this in mind, Together with the information kindly provided in a telephone conversation with a DVLA staff member, it is the desire of I to rectify the said situation and request the missing manufacturer's certificate of origin to be returned to I post haste. With this in mind, please find the V888 form as explained by the DVLA staff member in the telephone conversation. This notice is to accompany the V888 request form to ensure that the requirements of I are not misunderstood. Please supply the manufacturer's certificate of origin, which is the property of I, that is referenced by the DVLA number above as soon as possible. Be advised that failure to comply may be construed as concealment pursuant to Section 173 Part 3, Data Protection Act 2018, which states it is a criminal offence to alter, deface, block, erase, destroy, or conceal, which conceal bit is what we're on about, information with the intention of preventing disclosure. Regards, all rights reserved, without prejudice, blah, blah, blah. So on here, if you have a look, according to the telephone, according to the telephone conversation with a member of the DVLA staff, at no time have I said that it was me talking on the phone. Just to bear in mind, I'm, I'm actually just referencing a conversation I have heard. I am never making out that I was on the phone. I'm not trying to be deceitful and say I spoke to anyone. I'm just saying that, okay, according to the telephone conversation with a member of DVLA staff, which is 100% true. I am not saying I had the conversation. 
I'm just uh, noting it. Just so you know, because, you know, maybe you shouldn't do that as well if, you know, don't say you've been on the phone, unless you do ring them, and then you can say what whatever you like. So there we have it. So what I'm going to do, I've already done it, by the way. I've actually got the V8 that I've completed like that, and I've attached that notice as well. So it says attach a separate sheet of paper. I've attached that separate sheet of paper with that written on. So now I've sent it, and hopefully we wait to see what they come back with. A lot of people have asked, is it only brand new cars or can it be a second-hand car? I haven't got a brand new car. Mine's very old. So I'm just presuming that what happens is when they have the certificate of origin, that they keep it once they've got it. So you swap the car four or five times, different owner, different owner, different owner, whatever, but they still keep the certificate. It's only you changing the car with someone else. So I can only presume, I don't know, no one's ever done this to my knowledge, and I certainly haven't done it before. This is all research experimentation. So I'm presuming that they've still got it because the car's never been scrapped or uh, exported anywhere. So therefore, they're probably holding it until the car dies, i.e. gets scrapped or is um, exported somewhere. So they must have that. So they're actually going to have it on a file and sh showing what the number plates are. Uh, and then they're going to send that. Fingers crossed to me. Now, what they said was that once it's not their property, now bear in mind, I was talking about the, the custom made trikes and bikes that they are tax exempt because they're not owned. They haven't got registered with the DVLA. Well, this has got to be similar then. So if you've actually got your own plates, I don't know, by the way, how that would be affected by insurance because, you, you know, I, I, if it was me, I would want to be insured just in case I hurt somebody and they couldn't go to work. I would need to be paying for them until they can go back to work. I haven't got that much money to be able to pay everyone for, for the rest of their life. So I think insurance would be a good thing. But they're only using that as an act in a statute because you're coming under the Road Traffic Act because you're using their property, i.e. those plates with that car and they've got the manufacturer certificate of origin. It's interesting, isn't it? So, I mean, you know, this has got to be tried. This has got to be experimented. If this is what you've been looking for and you've been trying to do all these notices and 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 deregister your car from DVLA. Well, this seems to be an easy way of doing it rather than sending in loads of affidavits that are getting ignored and then getting replies, you know, telling you that you're insane. This here is just actually from coming from a DVLA staff member. Uh, it might be completely bang on. And then we're going to see, we're going to get rid of the actual plates, put your own plates on and then go from there. I mean, what can they actually do? This is the thing. A friend of mine did something very similar, went through some toll booths, etc. Nowadays, you don't have to stop and pay. They actually take a photograph. Now, they can't trace anything because it, it, the number plates are not on their system. It's not that they don't exist. It's that they are not on the DVLA system. So when we were looking for the V888, it comes up with loads of other forms there that any agency can pay just to get the information from the DVLA about the vehicle, which is your data, right? So if you've got a parking ticket, this is how they actually find out who is the keeper. Anything like that, the speed and fines and that, all get the information from there, okay? And they pay for it. So that's how we get it. We will keep everybody informed. I'm going to put the link for the V8 in the bottom. I'll also put the link for that. Notice that you can attach onto the V888 and then, you know, fingers crossed, we'll see if it works. But either way, it doesn't matter if it works or not. It would be nice if it did, but it needs to be tried. It needs to be researched because this is the only way we find out. We don't want rumor. We want facts. So we're looking to see what is true, not what is an opinion or saying it is the truth because the truth is just an opinion. We want to know what's true. Take care and we'll chat again soon. <laughs>